Hey guys, this is Jake Juicy Kim once again to bring you guys here on VR Chat Drama Court. Now today we are going to talk about objections and such. Now we talked about the flow of court here in VR Chat Drama Court, and like I said before, this world is made by Chuck and Chew, and as it is, uh, we've talked about how prosecution goes first, basically accusing the client or the defendant, as we speak, uh, from the defense's side to basically prove that this person has committed a crime. Now. There are objections to which you can actually state under certain states of which can be admitted and sustained. Sustained means agreeable, over overruled means you disagree, or the rather fact you kind of not you kind of disallowed it or disavow. So, what are these objections? So, forgive me, as I was gonna say, I warn. Uh, I'm gonna warn my, myself and for other people here. I am not an official attorney. I just have very. Amount full of experience and education for law, just like through studies and whatnot. As you can see, you can actually look it up and research about this. Now, these are the basics of which you could actually state objections to give yourselves as a good attorney as such. Now, what are these objections, as people say? Now, there are some that's not stated, but I'll do my best to basically give my own opinion at, or give my own. Um, explanation on what these objections are uh the ones i see right here is going to be on i'm sorry everything that i see is just going to be on a website and it's with this one i'm seeing it called gavel.io it's uh objections to evidence here in california so we're just gonna be following the california rules of evidence so if you guys don't know you can always look that up on the california uh, rules of evidence or from whatever state that you are in i'm pretty sure they will follow the same uh code of conduct anyways <clears throat> Uh, the first one I'm seeing is uh, one objection is mis misstates the testimony here and stated in California Evidence Code Section 210, 210, or 403. Obviously, when they misstate the testimony, I'm assuming it means, because there's no explanation for this. It just shows the evidence code on this. What it means is that they're basically stating, mm, I'm not sure what it means, actually. So whatever the case, I'm just going to skip through it. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let list it out to what you guys can look it up yourself. If you don't know, just look it up. Uh, just type up the California Evidence Code, and just type in section, and then two ten, two one zero or four or three, four four o oh, three. Sorry, I, I have weird like accents on how I say the numbers. Uh, this one I actually do know. Lack of foundation or no personal knowledge. California Evidence Code section seven o two a or a hundred. The statements lack foundation and or are not based on personal knowledge. Uh, so basically, if you don't state the time and date, if you don't basically state the location, if you don't state the name of which that person is or witness is stated right there, that's lack of foundation. There's no way that person or that per, uh, that person, uh, the defendant, caused the crime or has witnessed the entire story. So that is lack of foundation. If there's no foundated story of which that is at hand, uh, you could basically make that ob objection. Like I said, lack of foundation, basically stating that this person has no prior knowledge of the story at hand and therefore can be stricken and removed from record or from the court as it is. Uh, incomplete, I am not sure about what this is, but I'll read it for you guys. California Evidence Code 356, where part of a declaration, de deposition, or writing is entered into evidence, another party may enter its entirety in evidence to make it understood. Now, I what I do believe is something uh where the one side of the one side of the council itself will provide certain part part of evidence that will basically criminate that will basically criminate the defendant. However, basically what the other side can do basically is they can object for incomplete uh, incomplete evidence, basically showing that your honor there is actually more to which this evidence is basically trying to. Uh, proof as at itself, and then boom, it gave you. They gave you that whole story as it is. So you can't just really give off like one statement. Like for example, if there's a bunch of text messages and all, you can't just give that one text message to basically incriminate that person itself. That's incomplete. You can object to that for incomplete evidence. Uh, they and or they and if they overrule it, then you basically have that whole evidence to counter it out. Basically, your honor, this is the whole evidence of which, um, the whoever prosecution or defense basically can uh, basically stated 
an incomplete statement to which uh, we have the whole evidence right here of the whole complete text messages of from my client to whatever the case is so this is incomplete evidence to where if one person brought out a piece of evidence where there is a whole list that is exposed or that is right there right in front of you basically they can base uh, basically they can object to that and show the whole evidence of which can be go gone against them uh at least what i that's what i think inadmissible number four inadmissible speculation and conclusions california evidence code 400 403 410 direct evidence blah 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 directly proves effect without an interference inference or presumption so what i'm seeing here is blah 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 um Rather than offer evidence showing the fact sought to be proved that the party merely insinuates motives for the fact, such testimony is mere speculation and not supported by any evidence. So, basically, if you see, if you say, I think, or I believe, or say it is possible, or it is not possible, that's speculation. So, we could just say, like, for example, Your Honor, it is not possible for somebody to, uh, not to kill this man under like such anger like angry like behavior or such your honor the objection that speculation itself because he's saying it is it is not possible or it is not possible or it is possible he's giving up more of like factors you're not supposed to sp speak about factors you're supposed to say it and like as a as a concrete fact as it is so you can't really give up something that could be possibilities you have to be confident and you have to be like it has to be it so basically what i'm trying to say is basically don't give up possibilities give confirmation so basically prove that this person is is uh or did the crime at hand inadmissible hearsay california evidence code this is number five one two zero zero the alleged statements are out of court statements sought to be used for the truth of the matter asserted basically third party statements so if that person is out of court um basically not here in court with us today to testify or just basically here to confirm of the evidence at hand then that is uh basically hearsay so if that person is not here with us today that basically can testify oh that person did commit the crime oh we have evidence uh, i did uh examine or research of such like that and can basically confirm of such details that is not hearsay but if they're not here basically then that is hearsay and that is inadmissible to evidence as it is. Um, relevance or irrelevant and prejudicial. Number six, California Evidence Code 210 350 352. Court may exclude evidence who, whose probative value is substantially outweighed by undue consumption of time, undue prejudice, confusing the issues, or misleading the jury. So, this is pretty easy as it is. Irrelevant meaning like, how is this relevant to the case? So let's say, for example, the case is about murder. We could say that, Your Honor, uh, we're here to basically prove that this, uh, we're here basically have to prove this man killed, uh, killed somebody. But Your Honor, let's talk about, let's talk about food. Let's talk about his favorite food. Objection, Your Honor, irrelevance. What, how is that, how is that irrelevant to, the, how is that relevant to the case? That is, that's pretty much easy to tell as it is. So if you're ever looking, for, if you ever catch something like that, you can basically object to that for irrelevance. Another one is improper legal conclusion. This was is actually pretty clear as it is, but it's really hard to find. So if you uh, look at the example of, um, this is an example right here. Heyman versus Blog 176 California App 3D. I'm assuming this shows page numbers 629, 638 to 39, 639, 1986. Affidavits must cite evidentiary facts, not legal conclusions or ultimate facts. So... It's basically saying that diagnosis and all that too <clears throat> can be considered as evidentiary facts, not legal conclusions. So basically, diagnosis would be like, um, yeah, it shows that it shows that he has autism and all that too, but it does not prove that he is not autistic and such. It just basically proves that he has autism. That's diagnosis for the fact that it's evident evidentiary facts, not jumping to legal conclusions. So basically, if you're trying to accuse somebody saying that he's autistic. Uh, you can't just jump to a conclusion saying that, Your Honor, through this evidence, this basically proves that he's autistic. Your Honor, objection, improper legal conclusion. That's what it is. So, I think you guys kind of get that. Next one. 
improper expert testimony or improper opinion evidence that does not lay a foundation as to the individual's special knowledge, skill, experience, training, and education or a statement of the basis of the opinion. California Evidence Code 720-800-803 Affidavits or declarations setting forth only conclusions, opinions, and or ultimate facts are held insufficient. Even an expert's opinions cannot rise to the dignity of such a evidence if it is unsubstantiated by by facts. So, if you are not, like, for example, a doctor of five years or so, you can, uh, if you are not, if you are not a policeman, an officer that is within ten years, doesn't matter what year. If you're not within that proper ex- expert testimony, you are not given that uh moment. You're not given that limit of ex- uh, speculation, because there are some that actually have more experience than others, to which they can basically say, "Your Honor, we're here. To, uh, Your Honor, we can basically motion this person to be an expert witness." So you, if they don't, if they don't not state it, and they say I think or I think not, or based on my based on my experience, blah blah blah, you at the end you could basically say, Your Honor, I like to dismiss this witness for improper expert testimony. Why? Because they did not state that they were an expert. Uh, the prosecution or wit- uh, defense did not state that they are expert witness. That is some a difference to, between a expert witness and just a regular person, an eyewitness at itself. So you can basically, if you're basically going to count on that, make sure you say, if especially if they are have if they have experience on that matter, Your Honor, we'd like to make motion this person as an expert witness. Now, next one, lack of authenticate, lack of authentication. Uh, the documents are not authenticated or not have been produced in discovery. Uh, lack of authentication is in California Evidence Code 1400 or 1401. Basically, it's just basically government records, or basically if it has been signed or approved by uh, a department, like a police department, or by like ex- scientists or like uh, experts or, or at hand, basically signing that, hey, I checked this, this is actually good to go. Even like Photoshops, Photoshoppers can basically can check, like, hey, we checked this out, we signed this, this is basically Photoshop proof. You know, so that's like, uh, so if they don't, th- if they don't have that, you can basically object to that for lack of authentication. I don't know what this one is. It's called Best Secondary Evidence Rule, uh, California Evidence Code 1520 to 23, improper or improper or testimony regarded contents of a writing. I'm assuming it comes with hearsay, but I'm assuming it also comes with saying like affidavits and such. <coughs> um, I don't know about this one. This one will be this one. I guess you could just look it up yourself. So I don't know. Now I'm just move on. Contradicts prior sworn te- the p- uh, deposition testimony. I'm assuming this means like if someone were to w- uh, testify it itself, um, you could basically object or make the motion to stricken uh, to remove the dismiss the witness for contradicts prior sworn te- the p- deposition testimony or the testimony itself. So it holds an affidavit or declaration contradicting a sworn admission does not raise substantial evidence of a tribal issue of fact to defeat a summary judgment motion. So I'm assuming. That's basically, you know, if they get it wrong, if, if especially through evidence and all that too, they basically are proving that whatever the case is is doesn't make doesn't really fit into the story. And I believe there's more to that and there's more to that in hand, but we'll see. But also, I believe there's also more objections to which you can actually catch. There's also one that I don't really heard about, also known as striking over the shoulder. Let me look it up. Striking over, sh- or sh- or sh- over the shoulder, or the improper jury argument, I think. So, basically, that's something you guys can look up uh, look up upon also, but that will be for something else. So, I'll just stop there for now. Uh, the objections that which you guys can now use in court here in VRChat Drama Court. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.